Hello hackers! Welcome to the next video in the Dynamic Allocator Misuse Module of Pwn College. I'm Jan and we'll be talking about Tcash. Uh, what is Tcash? Um, Tcash is short for Thread Local Caching. It is a PT Malloc feature uh, created in the last couple of years um, and constantly evolving, which makes it actually uh, challenging to uh, teach about, um, that speeds up repeated small, and we're talking about things that are roughly a page in size or less, allocations done in a single thread, right? Um, modern processors are heavily multi-core, applications are becoming more and more threaded, um, and so thread performance for an allocator is very important now. Um, Tcash is positioned in such a way in PT malloc that it will be the um, primary malloc functionality that you'll be interacting with. Um, this is probably the most important part, at least to approach the challenge problems and in your uh, exploration of allocator security in general. Um, all right, so uh, how does Tcash work? Well, Tcash is implemented as a singly linked list. Um, we're going to go through a quick recap of what a singly linked list is. Um, each thread has a list header for different sized allocations. Um, basically, what happens is uh, in each thread, there's one instance of this Tcash per thread struct. That's why it's called per thread struct. And in this struct, there is a um, array of Tcash entry pointers. Uh, each of which point to the beginning of a list of uh, Tcash entries, of allocations that were previously freed and can be very quickly um, reused. And uh, these allocations, uh, or these different lists are called bins. They are all um, lists of an allocation of a certain size. Uh, heap allocations tend to round um, to the nearest uh, some amount of size uh, when they're allocated. And so you, um, in this allocation, um, um, let me collect my thoughts, uh, different sized allocations go into different lists. Let's take a look at this graphically. Um, take a look at how this linked list works. So here is the entry array, um, and I'll determine exactly how um, these allocations are, are selected again, but, but the bottom line is the first, uh, couple of entries in Tcash, in the Tcash per struct, um, per thread struct. Uh, entry zero is uh, 16 byte allocations. So if you malloc 16, entry two is malloc 32, or entry one, entry two is malloc 48, and so on, incrementing in 16. All right, um, there is one copy of a struct, we're gonna call it beyond here so that we can refer to it um, um, by name. And, uh, each entry in the Tcash list, so this is uh, a point, uh, an array in which um, the element is uh, the head of a list of Tcash entries. So uh, there, each of these entries is actually the allocation itself. When you free it, its data is reused to hold these pointers. The two pointers are going to be a pointer to the next allocation in that list and a pointer to the original structure beyond here. Let's see how this is set up. All right, imagine this scenario, right? Um, and I'll, I'll explain how this scenario gets to this uh, uh, view that, that we had um, previously. I'm gonna turn off my video for one second to mention one thing. Um, over here, we malloc a bunch of, of these guys, right? These all end up, when we free them, end up uh, getting added to the cache for later reuse. Uh, when we malloc stuff and don't free it, it has nothing to do with the cache. It's just hanging out somewhere in memory, right? Until you re until you free something, tcache doesn't come into play. All right, let's get my video back and roll on. All right, how did we get here? Let's start from the end of this the allocation um, part, right? Here we allocated a whole bunch of of uh, data regions. Uh, we allocated A, B, C, D, E, and F. Here they all are of different sizes, right? And now we're about to start freeing them. So um, right now, when nothing is freed, uh, when everything 
you know, the, the, the cache is empty. Uh, we have all of the counts at zero and all of the entries at null. Then we free B. So what happens when we free B, we increment the count, we put it in the cache. So now there's one thing, one 16 byte, B was a 16 byte allocation, one 16 byte uh, entry in the cache. So we put the 16 byte um, uh, element of count to one. And then uh, this uh, entry pointer, we point to B. It says, hey, there's that first allocation. But then we free A, right? What happens when we free A? Well, the count becomes two. Now there are two 16 byte allocations in the T cache. We uh, change the, the pointer to A, and then we change the next pointer of A to B, right? The next pointer of B is null because there is nothing after B. It was the first thing to get put in the cache. And all of them have this key um, pointer, which actually, I don't know why they call it the key, but it points back to the uh, T cache per thread struct. Um, uh, that is how they um, can tell which thread, sorry, which cache this is currently in. Um, and we'll talk about why they need to, why malloc, PT malloc needs to know that in a second. Um, all right, and then we update the, the head of the list to A. So now the head of the list from the P thread struct, this points to A and then A points to B. That is a singly linked list. There's one uh, forward pointer. A doubly linked list would also have B pointing back to A. And instead, this is a singly linked list and then they all point to the, the, the uh, P thread struct. All right, what happens when we free F? F is a little different because F was 32 bytes long. So when we free F, we end up um, using a different entry the 32 byte entry, right? Basically the way we compute the entry is just divide the size by six, uh, by six, by 16. Um, so this is the first one, this is the second one, right? Second entry, um, same thing as when we put B in there, it's the, the only thing, so the next is null, the key is beyond, the count of for 32 is one, and the pointer for um, the 32 uh, is F. All right, then we free E, same thing happens. So count is now two, E is now at the head of the list, E points to F. When we free C, now the count is three. These are all 32 uh, byte allocations. The head of the list points to C, that was the most recently freed thing. And the reason that they put it get put in the head is that um, is the fewest amount of memory operations. All you have to do is update this and update this. Everything else stays the same, which is very nice. Um, so and um, and then uh, the uh, entry points to C, C points to E, E points to F, F points to null, and they all point back to beyond to the T cache per thread struct with their key. All right, and then finally, when we free D, D is a 48 byte allocation, um, and it goes into its own bucket, it, its own bin, and it, there's now one thing in that bin, and then. Um, uh, the head points to D and D points to null. As we free all of these, note the ones that aren't freed don't have the key variable set. They, I mean, they, they probably are the key, yeah, uh, remember, they, they probably have some data in here. This is whatever data, this is literally the malloc result, right? Um, let's uh, dive into this actually in code. What happens when you free? Well, first you look at the size of that allocation. We'll talk in a future video about how um, these allocations are uh, how the size is tracked. Um, and we figure out the index by, uh, sub yeah, that's right, subtracting one and then dividing by 16. So if you have from zero to six, from one to 16, that is slot zero, from 17 to 32, slot one, and so forth. Um, then we check, make sure that we haven't already been freed. This is actually a fairly complex check. Um, but the bottom line is the, the, the simple version is it starts out with checking that 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 um, key pointer. Um, we're saying is our that that first. This is a keyword. The, the the first eight bytes is the second eight bytes of the allocation. We take those second eight bytes and we check does that equal the address of our struct? Are we pointing back to uh, beyond? 
the, the, the tcash per thread struct instance for our thread. If not, if, if it finds that we've already freed this, the whole program dies. It's, it's the same uh, security problem as a, a, a broken canary, right? Um, means something is going horribly wrong. Otherwise, we push the freed allocation to the front of the list and we observe that. Here's the code for it. We basically take the address of the um, current head of the struct and we put that into our first uh, keyword, into this next pointer, and then we put our address into the entries, uh, uh, into that list entry in the, the per thread struct, and then we um, increment the count. Super simple. And then let me vanish my video so you can see this whole line. Um, and then uh, we record the uh, address of the struct associated with the freed allocation. This is our beyond that this is, this is what's later checked to make sure we haven't double freed, right? Um, and as you see, again, when we, uh, when we free, before we free D, this key was null. After we free D, this key, the value became beyond. All right, or the address of our, 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 our tcash per thread struct. So that's how you free. How do you allocate? It's basically that in reverse. Um, on allocation, we compute um, the size, right? You do malloc a requested size. We calculate the index, rather. We compute the index based on that requested size, the same way we compute it in the free. We um, check, uh, this is pseudocode, obviously, but we check to see if our tcash uh, per thread struct, the, the cache of that specific thread has anything in its cache. Um, if, if the count of that index of that bin is greater than zero, if not, by the way, we create a new allocation. We'll talk about how that is done in a future video. But if um, the count is non-zero, if there is something in the allocation, then we reuse um, that allocation in the front of the list. Um, basically, we pull out the entry at uh, the front of the list um, and we uh, put the uh, we update that entry field with the next entry in the list, right? We just pull out the first entry, and that's again very few um, uh, memory operations. And then we decrement the count, and we're good to go. You'll notice some things that are not done. Um, we don't clear out sensitive pointer, so that next pointer is still going to be present um, in the returned allocation. But for some weird reason, um, th there is some thought to clearing out pointers, only that key pointer when we, uh, I'll show you in, in, in at, at runtime on the slides, um, but only the key pointer is, is zeroed out. And then um, the other amazing thing that we don't do is check if the next uh, pointer so the the uh, if it makes sense. So when we when we allocate something, I'll show you. We don't check to make sure that what we are updating our entries with actually makes any sense. All right. So let's see what happens. We have this tcash configuration. We know how we arrived at it um, from uh, before. What happens when we uh, start allocating from this now? So if we malloc sixteen, that'll return a. It looks on um, this this count, right? It, it 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 says okay. There is there are two entries in this um, this the bin for things between one and sixteen bytes, um, and it uh, grabs that a. It returns it, and then it takes this and moves it in here. Oops, let me pause that because I forgot to update the slides. One sec. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so what you see is when we do the malloc A, we, uh, malloc 16, it takes, it sees that the count is non-zero. It returns what used to be here. There used to be A. It returns it and it writes the next pointer, uh, the value of the next pointer in A, and it writes it to B, or to the uh, entry, uh, relevant entry in the per thread struct, and the state is this. Um, and it decrements count. And then if we then allocate a couple more things, allocated C and E, or allocated two, 32 two times, then it does the same thing. First, it, it decremented this and then wrote E into here, and then it, it grabbed E and, and returned C. 
then it did the same thing and it returned E for the second allocation. Um, and then it, it wrote F into here. What, what was the next um, point, uh, point value of the next pointer in E. Um, you'll see as we're allocating the T cache implementation is nulling out this beyond pointer, but it is not nulling out um, these uh, next pointers for some reason. Um, it's also not doing any checks. If instead of B, this was some random address that it happily put it here, that's going to be important for your homework. All right. Um, and of course, the implication of that is the next time you malloc, you would end up uh, returning that random address. Um, if we do a couple more allocations, uh, D, B, and F, you know, we'll pop, it's called pop that from the list as well. And then uh, we'll end up with all zeros and, and a bunch of nulls in the entries, right? Um, these nulls don't actually matter. As far as I can tell in the modern implementation, these counts are what matters. Um, if the counts are zero, it just won't use these values at all. All right. Uh, what if we malloc off of an empty cache? Well, it'll create a new, new mapping, like I mentioned before. And we'll talk about how that happens in a future video. All right. So what is the point here? Um, the reason I wanted you to understand all of this is two things. One of them is a double free. Um, so let me show you what happens um, when we free an already freed uh, um, allocation. Um, so it used to be, it used to be that you could just do this with Tcash, with uh, you know the, the version of Tcash that's in Ubuntu 18.04, the version of Tcash we used last time in class. You could just free and then free again, and it would happily go for it. it had no security checks. It was as fast as humanly possible. And now, what happens if you try to do that? is this same as stack check fail. It'll detect that um, your, uh, you had already freed this and it'll fail. How does it detect it? Well, as I mentioned a little while back, it detects it by checking if this key variable, if the key pointer is pointing to the P thread struct, right? turns out, ah, you didn't see that. Actually, we can, we can very easily see it on the source. So we look at malloc.c and find a, let's search for that double free. Oh, that's weird. Hold on. The browser isn't properly. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, let's copy double free detected in Tcash. We can find the source code. All right, hold on. I'll bear back. I'm going to find the source code and bring it up. All right, here's the source code for malloc. Um, let's uh, actually grow it a little bit. All right, this is malloc. It's the latest and greatest, but it, the, the same check is uh, in whatever version is in Ubuntu 20.04. Let's search for double free uh, detected in perfect. And here is the check that occurs. It literally checks for the E is our allocation, our Tcash entry. And then it checks, hey, is the key variable equal to our tcache uh, per thread struct? If yes, it actually goes through and makes sure it is a double allocation, but, but the check is th that. That's the check we need to defeat, or not double allocation, double free. So if we have some way to write to the pointer, to, to that allocation after it's freed, and again, as you've seen, use after freeze happen, then we can trigger a double free. Check this out. 
So th all I did was I am corrupting that key variable, the second uh, eight bytes of uh, my allocation with one, two, three, four, instead of the pointer that is there before. And if I run it, it'll, fr it'll free, it'll double free, it'll pass that check. And then the next two mallocs will return the same address, right? And they, they just malloc and malloc. That is uh, brutal to a program. Um, it's, 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 it's crippling to security because, again, you end up with an overlapping allocation. Depending on what those are used for, that can be really, really bad news. All right. Um, what is another thing? Uh, oops. Uh, another problem with um, Tcash being so trusting. Well, Tcash is uh, sorry. Tcash's trusting nature allows us to do what is called uh, a cache poisoning attack. Basic idea: What happens if we corrupt Tcash entry uh, next? That first variable. As a reminder, the variable that points onwards to the next part of the list. When it's allocated, when a Tcash entry is returned through malloc, Tcash blindly takes that next um, variable, the value of the next pointer of the um, entry it's about to return, and it puts it into the head of the list. So let's take a look what happens. Um, I created this T uh, redirection. So if we create a stack buffer or another piece of memory that we, have, we control and we free a bunch of things. So to create a Tcash uh, linked list in, in, in memory, to we warm up, this is called, warm up the Tcash, do this. And then we corrupt using a use after free the next pointer of the freed entry that used to point to be the, the head of the list, the la last thing that was freed. When we do our first malloc, it'll return, oops. When we do our first malloc, it'll return A. When we do our second malloc, it'll return what A next was pointing to, and that is our stack buffer because we corrupted that next pointer with our stack buffer. We could corrupt it with anything we want as long as it's valid memory that malloc can return. Cool. Um, so this is uh, how um, Tcash uh, works on a high level and some of the attacks that you can yield uh, against it. Um, in summary, basically, Tcash is a, a layer for caching small allocations. And I believe the cutoff is 1036 bytes on AMD64. It was as of a year ago or two years ago. Um, but you can actually experiment um, on your own. Pwn Debug has a heap plugin that allows you to examine the state of the heap. And you can actually see um, what the state of Tcash is as you free and malloc and so forth. Um, Tcash uses a um, singly linked list with very few um, security checks. And this isn't even as insane as it gets. We're going to go even crazier, but honestly, in your um, uh, challenge problems and so forth, this is uh, more or less as insane as it gets. Good luck.